ordinance to require lease restrictions on multi use trails, including the Linwood Park and Hill Trail. And it's time to hand it over to our district manager to give some background and some information. This morning, I just give you a tally of the 31 correspondences that I received. Uh, 18 were opposed to leash restrictions and 13 were in support of leash restrictions. So that's the number that I got in terms of correspondence. Um, with that, I know that Shane Valentine, who is uh, uh, on the Park and Rec Commission and currently serving as the chair, and Isabella, who was on the Park Commission, might have a greater perspective from the Park and Rec Commission, but I think that was pretty well covered in the last meeting. Um, if there's any questions as to exactly what the revision in the language of the ordinance is that isn't answered by the memo I put, I'm happy to clarify that, but I tried to make it as clear as I could without reproducing the entire ordinance at this point in time. Thank you, Eric. Shane, is there anything you'd like to add from the Park and Rec Commission? No, just to say that what was presented to the board and just for everyone who's new from the public, um, the commission acts as an advisory board and it was on the agenda when it came out. Um, and just for perspective uh, of this, was this was um, presented as a clarification um, and not creating a new thing per se. Um, so the way we discussed it um, as a commission was looking at the map that we have that kind of defines what the boundaries are within the district and that that panda handle had uh, from the key uh, was designated as multi-use trail on the map. And so using that as the, if, if that is correct and that was the guide that we were going off of, uh, was just clarifying the definition of a park so that it was clear that it was to include a multi-use trail, not specifically the panhandles, specifically. Um, if the map is wrong, then this, because you know, we can talk about that differently or if you want to change it, but that's the, that was the commission's approach to this, um, is to make the multi-use trails safe for everyone. Um, and that's how we came to that decision as a, as a, as a commission. And that was our recommendation. If Isabella wants to, I understand. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you both, Shane and Isabella. Before we move on to public comment for this, for, for item F, are there any technical or clarifying questions that the board would like to ask staff or the commission at this time? I, I myself, I did have a few questions that, that uh, I'll, I'll ask Eric. The, the first one is that currently there, there are signs at both the beginning and the end of the panhandle is that we're speaking to leash requirements in that area currently, is that correct? There are signs there, those were placed a number of years ago, I mean they certainly predate me, my understanding of those signs, and this is an authoritative statement, but my understanding of those signs is they're actually pointed in a direction so that you read them as you leave the panhandle, meaning at the uh, eastern end of the panhandle trail there's the mini park, so as you enter the mini park that is a leash restricted zone as you enter, leave the panhandle by the maintenance shop and into by the tennis courts in the main park, you've left that part of the park and you're now coming into the other part of the park. Okay. That's my understanding. Again, that predates me uh, or my involvement in any of this. Okay. Excuse me, do you want to look at it? Um, sure. That's this is the sign. Thank you, Linda. So if if any member of the public or any member of the board would like to look further at this, you're, you're saying that these are, are basically, you see these as you're leaving the panhandle areas currently, correct? Right? That's the one at the main part you see when you walk in. Yeah, okay. I think they were mistakenly uh, placed reverse. So mm -hmm. as the ordinance stands right now, the signs should be, you should be seeing the signs as you leave the panhandle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but they might be first because there was a mistake in the installation. Okay. And then my other question is is regarding the current designation of technically what the panhandle is. Is the panhandle considered 
park, or, or is it defined as open space? And then following up to that, how is how is it tr how is it maintained in comparison to actual open space? I don't think it is defined, okay. which is why I think we're at the point that we are at right now. I know what the intention and what the discussion was in 2011 when this was done, and those minutes uh, were in the last board packet because the question about that clearly came up. Uh, I will say we don't treat it as we treat the rest of our open space. There has been some levels of maintenance that have occurred along that area, some levels of landscaping. We don't do things like that along, along the open space. There are volunteer groups that do levels of trail maintenance throughout the open space, but that's not a district uh, expense or district sanctioned. It's, these are volunteer groups who maintain open space trails. Um, so from that aspect, from a care and maintenance perspective, it is not cared for and maintained in the same way that we care for or maintain the larger swaths of open space uh, that surround the district here. And I did see just that uh, one of the park commissioners, John Toon, had just stepped in, and I just wanted to let you have an opportunity if there was anything you wanted to add regarding the, the dog leash ordinance that we're currently talking about. I guess the only comment I would make is when I reviewed that ordinance, you could read it from different perspectives and see that it was adequate the way it was worded or you could make changes to it. So it's a, it's a I, I think that's the, what generated a, a negative vote on my behalf when that came up for approval because I thought the language was in there if you wanted to read that. In terms of already having restrictions or? Th that it was enforceable already okay. having, uh, it, but it depends on how you look at that space. Okay. So unless, are there any other questions from the board? Okay, so we'll move on now to public comment regarding this, this issue. And unless the rest of you are, are here for the rest of the business that we, we do have, I imagine many of you would like to speak on, on this issue. If, if, you, if you would like to speak, could you raise your hand at this time? Okay. In, in that case, then, I don't feel necessary to, to restrict the, the amount of time to speak down to the, the typical two-minute limit. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to speak regularly, but if it seems to be redundant or, or drag on, then, then I'll eventually uh, let you know that we'll have to move on. So um, we'll take public comment at this time. Sir, if you'd like to say your name. Hi, <coughs> I'm Ron Dubin, a resident since 1982 and a dog owner, and walker. Uh, walker meaning I walk my dogs off the leash in Marinwood. Um, I would like a little more clarification about um, the cause of this. I only know what I read in the newspaper and regarding kind of an ins isolated case of, of, uh, of one particular dog versus another woman's uh, basset hound or something that kind of uh, spurred this whole thing. So I was interested if, if that's really the, the key issue of what this all came about, or is it something more uh, broad? So at, at this time, it's, it's generally, the board is generally only allowed to answer with, with factual information. Currently, we're not able to get into discussion on it. so. Regarding your question, I'll, I'll state what I know, which is I, I do know that uh, an incident was made known to to the district. However, I don't I, I don't believe that that is is the sole reason as to why we're looking at it. I think as Shane had had stated, the, the commission started looking at this in order to clear up the ambiguity and vagueness that is in the current ordinance and just make sure that what is allowed versus not allowed is more clearly defined. Yes, if, if you'd like to say your name, you don't have to, but. Yeah, yeah, my name's Pam Coffey, and uh, I live in the room. With <coughs> and one question I have before I go on is the 
area, the wooded area behind Noah Creek School. What is that? I mean, are, is that in terms of is that open space or is uh, that is that something that you would this ordinance would include a leash law in that wooded area, or you're just talking about when you come after when you come around the corner of the tennis courts and you get to the maintenance area and it's just that strip. The, that has primarily been the only part in, in discussion that we're talking about. But Shane, do you have any idea as far as that that wooded area behind the creek? And then we talk about that map or that's that's Dixie School, school District. Well, it's part of it's Miller Creek School owned and part of it is we're in the open space. <coughs> so if it's owned by the church. Yeah, you get into a very confusing area there. It's it, to answer the question as directly as I can, it, it's an open space area. We do not own all of that property. We own a, a portion of it. Uh, the school district owns a portion of it and the church that is on the hill back here actually owns a portion of it as it comes down as well. So that wouldn't be affected uh, if this leaf ball would pass, that would not be affected. Well, let me let me ask Eric, do we know, is there a clear demarcation of where the open space starts and where the park area starts? Is it at is it at the creek? So I know the tennis, there's tennis courts also on that side, and then there's also some, some paths. Uh, I wouldn't say that there's a clear demarcation. I think when you cross that bridge by the tennis courts and you hang a right, you obviously get into kind of a more forested area. If you keep going straight, you're obviously on a school campus yeah. ground. So it's, uh, it is, again, not an area that we maintain. It's not an area that we do any sort of work with whatsoever. You know, Robin will use it, that area occasionally for summer camp activities, um, but it is not an area that we actively maintain. So other than the tennis courts or that are on that side? The tennis courts, yes. OK. okay. But nothing, uh, I'm, I'm thinking south of the tennis courts yeah. on the other side, uh, and I believe that's what um, yeah, that's what you're well, before I went on, I wanted to clarify that, but, um, you know, I've owned three different dogs in the past 20 years, and they've all played joyfully in that wooded area. We've walked that whole area off leash. I've never once uh, come across any kind of an incident. Um, I feel fortunate to live within walking distance of somewhere where my dogs can be off leash. Certainly, I drive to fire roads at some times, but when you're working full time, you get home late, sometimes it's nice to just be able to go you know, across the street and give your, let your dogs run and play a little bit. Um, so I'm opposed to the Swedish law, obviously. I think it's unrealistic and unreasonable to restrict the rest of the community who are responsible dog owners because of a few isolated incidents that have raised harsh voices of a small um, segment of the community. In addition, and any dog trainer will, will concur with this, Requiring a dog to be on leash will not make the dog well behaved. You know, uh, only good training will do that. An aggressive dog is an aggressive dog. It's up to the owner to train and control the dog. Um, and even if a leash law were put in effect, I'm not sure how it can be enforced because I have walked my dog, you know, not only in the park and in the woods, but I've walked my dog along the street off leash because he's well behaved. He's a therapy dog. And one time, Early in the morning, for some odd reason, an angry truck driver stopped me and said, that dog has to be unleashed. And the sheriff was driving by, and he stopped the sheriff and complained. And the sheriff said, I don't have any, um, I don't control leash laws. I don't enforce leash laws. I can report it to the Humane Society if you like. He said, yes, do that. So the next day, the Humane Society came to my house and said, I don't enforce leash laws. I just want to know if your dog has a license, and he has a good home, and he's not aggressive. And of course, he was has a good home, he was very well behaved, and he had a dog mm -hmm. license. So I don't know, you know, who's going to enforce this exactly. And, um, you know, if it were the wooded area that belongs to the school district, I don't know how that would be enforced. You know, I, as a high school teacher, we're always given supervisions. And so I say this tongue in cheek, but, you know, if that area is going to be under a leash, well, I wonder if the Miller Creek teachers would like to enforce it, so, knowing that, of course, we walk our dogs at 7 in the morning, 6 o'clock at night. And so currently that area is not part of what we're well, that's refer good. referring to. It, 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 it is that to. portion of a, the panhandle that runs between the, the two park areas. You know, be able to, to make a loop and have a you know, place where our dogs can run freely. And I did send the board this 
picture of my dog, who's a therapy dog, and children at Mary Silvera School read to him. He's very well behaved and loved, and he gives back to the community, and I would like the community to give back to him. to what you said regarding having additional conveniences for, for dogs. I, I fully understand and agree with you on that. As, as I also have a one and a half year old son, I will fully attest to our child is more unsanitary than our dogs. So. <laughs> um, Ray? Hi. Um, the, the same uh, comments, you know, that the, the lady had just stated that my experience is because uh, I have to look all over the place for my dog. I have a, a, a lab that loves to run, you know, as much as it possibly can. It hasn't hurt anybody, but it has likes to have that periodic, you know, run into the creek and then back out again when we let her go. You know, and that's it. We don't let her go that often. And the thing is, trying to find other areas, like we go to McGinnis, we go to, uh, I've even taken her out to, uh, out to uh, near Beach, you know, all kinds of areas, you know, to go ahead and find places 
where she can go ahead and get the exercise that she needs because she is, you know, a, a dog that needs to be exercised. You know, <coughs> just walking around the neighborhood on a leash just doesn't do it. And I think that if if we if we try and restrict, you know, the ability for these dogs to go ahead and do what they need to do, you know, it isn't enough to do it in, the, in your house or in your yard. You know, you need to have more space for them to do this. And I've got a Chawini also that is her brother, and the, the two of them wrestle with one another, and they don't, they're not, you know, aggressive or anything like that, except the Chawini tries to protect her from other dogs that try and get near her. So we have to watch out for the Chawini more than we do <laughs> the lab. And the lab doesn't go to the beach, except to play in the sand because it doesn't like the water. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got, you've got all of these issues that you have to balance out. And I, and I believe that that small area of the, of the park is something that they, we should leave to that, uh, you know, to, to the dogs off leash because we have so much of the area that is used by the rest of the community is open to the rest of the community. And they, you know, I, I think it's only fair to have some balance when it comes to, to uses within the park. So I appreciate the, at least having my comment. Thank you. Uh, yes, go ahead. Hi, my name's Maureen. And um, the McGinnis situation, they're actually, when they do this revamping, they're building a dog park. And once the dog park comes into play, we're not going to be allowed to walk our dogs off leash down below around the fields anymore. My dog gets along great with almost every other dog unless a dog behaves aggressively towards him. And then, so I have to be aware and, and pull him back really quickly if there's any kind of potential thing that happens. But because he has concerns, he, he, he doesn't do well in a dog park. He won't play with other dogs that he doesn't know. So the idea that we can simply set up dog parks and everyone can bring their dogs to a dog park is not really an answer for every dog owner. Plus, if, my dog, if I take my dog to a dog park, he'll just sit next to me. And I don't get exercise, my dog doesn't get exercise. So it's, it's really not of any value. There are so many areas available for people to walk where dogs are not off leash. I mean, I don't know what the percentage in the county is, but I'm thinking it's a huge percentage. So the small little areas that we have available that we can allow our dogs to be off leash, where we can get our exercise and they can explore and be dogs, is, is so valuable. I just really would hate to see us lose another chunk of it. So that's all. Um, so I'm going to try to go in, in order of who, who I've seen have their hand raised. What was your name again, ma'am? Pam, but, I won't, but Vicky's probably going to say the same thing I was going to okay, say. Okay, so yeah, that would be great. Cause we're, we're trying to, <coughs> or, um, uh, or not, not, not with your comments, but um, go ahead. My name's Vicki Moore, and I've been here since 1980 in Marinwood, but I have, you know, been raised in Marin County, and I've seen over the years, you know, so many of our laws taken away, especially with dog owners. Um, I, was, I worked at Guide Dogs for many years as an instructor, and I've been a dog trainer for many years. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is that there is an etiquette um, with dog owners, and I think it's an unspoken law that if you see somebody walking along with a dog on leash, mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. And that they're either uncomfortable with dogs off leash, or they don't know, they don't trust their dog being off leash. So when you see that, I have four big dogs, and so people are, are very much intimidated because they're large dogs. And a lot of these people know who my dogs are, but they're all very well trained. And so when I see somebody with a dog on leash, I call my dogs, I make them sit, I make, put them on leash, I wait for that person to go by. and that. What that does, it, it doesn't create any kind of 
anxiety because I see people with little kids and they're looking like, oh my God, so I'll call my dogs. I'll get them under control. Now, I'm a dog trainer and not all people have that kind of control with their dogs. But I would say that that's why there are problems because the miscommunication, people are coming on, they see a dog coming, they don't know if it's friendly or not. Most times they are. They're off leash. They're so much more likely to be friendly than if they are on leash. There's a, a real aggression problem uh, with people that don't work with their dogs, you know, on leash. So I say um, that can be a problem too. But if there's an etiquette involved, if you see somebody coming along and they're uncomfortable, if you have control, voice control over your dog, get them over there. Wait for the people to go by and then continue on. And your dogs are fine with that. And then they get freedom, you get freedom, and nobody is harmed. I think it's when, you know, you can see when you have the responsibility of uh, many dogs or dogs off leash and they're large, people don't understand. And they have little kids, there's a lot of little kids in Marin Wood. So, you know, you've got to respect that. And I respect that, and um, you know, it's hard to, uh, you know, with everybody, I know there are people out there that have um, ride bicycles and they ride with their dogs. It's easy enough, you know, if you see somebody just pull over, hey guys, come on over, okay, let the person go by. Because obviously if a person has a dog on leash, there's a reason for it. Thank you. Um, sir, and then, and then Stephen, and are there any other comments after that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll and just end discussion after those, those four, and comments after those four, so that we can uh, move, move on with the Sir, go ahead. Uh, Gary Novak, I'm a resident, a dog owner, and breeder, husband, father, grandfather. I guess my question to the board is, is there an action? I'm not sure what the action is. Is there, no, there could be no action. There could be an action to change the existing law or the existing enforcement. Is that what I understand? So what we're currently looking at is, is making a, a change to the exist, the current ordinance, ordinance 2011-03, to include language reg, uh, regarding, regarding park use, adding in multi-use trails, which would cover that portion of the, the, the trail that connects the two park areas together. So what we'll be doing after public comment is over is we'll be looking for a motion from the board <coughs> in a second to make these changes and to also, also include in that motion any other any other important things that need to be done in order for that to be effective? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephen? Uh, so, so many people have spoken eloquently, and I'll, I can't really add too much to it. There's a few people here who I really revere as uh, dog people that really understand uh, the behavior of dogs, and I hope they'll have the courage to, to stand up and speak. Maybe they don't want to. But, um, uh, I want to limit my comments to uh, the, this law. I came on the Park and Rec Commission in large part because the leash law was being discussed a number of years ago. And the way that it came out was uh, the, the panhandle was open space and that was to remain off leash. It was a compromise between two uh, strong camps of, of, of people. Um, with regards to the map and to the sign, we need to change probably both of them, but certainly the sign. Both of those were done by Tom Horn, okay, and he wasn't writing law when he was doing that. He was just writing a map. But with regards to the sign, it says that that area is closed at 11 p.m., and as soon as that that sign was installed. I called up Tom and I believe I sent him an email saying, Tom, get that sign out of here. We don't want people behind our houses on quiet wood drive hanging out in the park till 11 p.m. And he said, oh yeah, I'll do that. And um, 
And so it actually never happened. Now with regards to rules, we have all kinds of rules in the park. And one of those rules is you can't have alcoholic beverages without permission. And I'm not going to name names, but every Friday night we <laughs> <laughs> had the horseshoe pit, I see plenty of guys drinking beer, and some of them are. Stephen, I'm going to ask you to keep it to the issue. No, please keep it to the issue at hand. I am. Uh, this is the issue. The issue is enforcement, selective enforcement. So. If we're going to go on a witch hunt on these little issues, you really have to understand that it's not going to stop at the leash law. There's going to be other things, and other things, and other things. And that's not the community we live in. Uh, this community has been around for, I guess, 60 years, and it's always been an easy place to live. Let's keep that vibe going. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, my name's David Heston, and um, I'm the owner of Harley, whose dog, this is, instigated this whole thing. Uh, it's pretty much an isolated incident, which, you know, I took responsibility for. Um, my dog is not an attack dog. He's not an aggressive dog. Uh, he's friendly. I recognize every single person in this room. Everybody knows me. I've been here for 18 years. <clears throat> I've had either one or two dogs at a time. I take them around this loop. Uh, two to three loops every day, so if you do the math, it's over 20,000 times. This is the only incident we've had a, a dog being injured. Um, I don't see anybody having issues. We police ourselves. I mean, if somebody has a dog, people tell them to put them on leash. We, everybody knows who they are. It's not like uh, uh, we're a bunch of irresponsible people. I mean, we love dogs. Um, I take responsibility for my dog. He's well trained. He's not aggressive. Um, the stuff that's put in the, you know, on the neighborhood patch or whatever it's called. I was hiking up Queenstone two days ago. I came across a lady who had a coon and hound dog, and my dog went up and played with it, and I told her to come to the meeting. She's not here. And uh, I said, yeah, this is my dog, Harley. She goes, oh, I've heard of this dog. Is this the attack dog? <laughs> I, was, I was worried. That I asked my husband what I would do if I came across this dog on the trail, you know. So people are scared. I mean, that's not the way it is here. I mean, it's not dangerous to go down the Panhandle Trail. I mean, people are friendly, dogs are well behaved. Um, putting a dog on a leash, like Vicki said, is not the answer. That's not going to solve the problem. Um, it's not going to be enforced. I want to vote for Harley. I do. I know he <laughs> <laughs> like, I love Harley. I mean, um, he's sorry, a great just, dog. Just a point, point of order for our meetings. Um, in, in order to, in order to, to speak as, as board president, please wait to be recognized. So, but. A motion over to me. It's okay. It's okay. Adrian. No problem. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, that is a good question. I mean, is there, I mean, everybody here knows me. Does anybody have like big issues? I mean, I'm a responsible person. I'm friendly. My dog's friendly. It's a, it's a, it's an unfortunate incident, which I, you know, I took care of her vet bill and I apologize and I'm making sure that, that something like that doesn't happen again. But uh, it shouldn't restrict all these people from enjoying the park and taking their dogs out and letting them run. I mean, it's, you know, 20,000 loops, one, one incident. I mean, that's, <laughs> you go to a dog park, there's dogs attacking dog parks daily. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous to take the dogs to the dog parks. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I, I do want to try to have us be able to move, uh, move on from public comment on, on this. So unless you have something that is very different from issue from points that have already been made. Uh, if, if I have a question, I understand. Um, real, real quickly again, um, please wait to, to, okay. to be recognized before you speak. Um, so with, with, I, I see three new hands up, and, I, and I'm sure Linda has, has comments that she doesn't want to make. So if, if I'll, I'll, I'll recognize these last four people to speak, uh, but please try to make them quick, and then and then if we can if the board can then continue on with the discussion. So um, go ahead, Ann. Hey, my name is Ann. Uh, I'm a person that walks my dog on leash and off leash. I keep her on leash because I don't want her up in the hills. And I don't like her out of my sight. But my question to you is, if you're going to push this leash law, what do we do in the summer? We creek walk. You mean we have to walk through the creek with our dogs on a leash? <laughs> It, it, it just it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 
Harley's a wonderful dog. <laughs> We've all walked in this park for years. I have never ever seen an incident between any two dogs. And the only time that I've ever run into a problem, there happens to be a boxer that walks there too. When she's on leash, she's horrible. When she's off leash, she's very, very friendly. So it can also make a dog aggressive to be on a leash. Thank you. Um, I'll try to see if we can get a quick answer to your question. Eric, do we know, is, is the creep designated as anything, or, or what would that necessarily be defined as? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think it's a designated environmentally sensitive or restricted area. Uh, you know, if anything, it would fall underneath there. It <coughs> meanders in and out of various areas of property. It's primarily an open space until you enter areas where it falls on the side of the property. But would, <coughs> would the creek itself fall under? It under would not be a multi-use trail. Okay. <laughs> okay. It does. Um, so Go ahead. Okay, my name is Shelly Russell. I apologize for coming late. I was at PT. So I didn't get to hear all of the speakers, but I, and I'm hearing more about dog versus dog aggression versus dog versus people. My husband walks that park every day. He's a cancer survivor and has a very scary immune system. He has, over the last two years, been had a dog, several dogs, probably he said six times, come running at him with teeth growling. He was very frightened. And of course the dog owner always says, they're, they're, he's friendly, he's friendly, he won't hurt. Um, when we went walking this last weekend, there wasn't one person with a dog that had even a leash in their hand. So I'm starting to think, oh, this is no longer a leash law because I've never seen anything before. I'm telling you that he was very afraid. Over the last two years, there was probably six incidences of dogs running directly at him, not in a friendly manner. And I like dogs. So I, I'm coming just as a person saying, you know, there. I'm also a kindergarten teacher. I know a lot of kids that are just have a natural fear of dogs. And when they rush at you, it's not comforting just to have someone say that they won't hurt you. So that's my point. Thank I'd you. like to see some sort of leash law stay in effect. Thank you. Oh. I'll try to make this as, as quick as I can. Um, first off, um, I'll relate a, a, an incident with Harley. Uh, years ago, um, you know, he was a young puppy. He is not um, a vicious dog. Uh, I've seen him many times since. Um, when I first met him, he jumped up on me. Um, because he's a young puppy. Um, and my dog, who is used to being a pack leader yogi, he's a big old male, um, kind of, you know, taught him what the rules were. <laughs> and he was just fine. I mean, you know, I do not believe, and I've seen the dog uh, many times since then, haven't seen for a while, uh, but I've seen the dog many times, and I have not noticed any type of aggressive tendencies uh, with a particular dog. Um, I want to make a couple of quick comments about, about leash laws. People believe that um, a leash is a cure-all, and it's not. If you're going to keep an animal, you have a personal responsibility to make sure that the animal is well-behaved. Uh, my observance, uh, I've been a Marinwood resident for 40 years, over 40 years. Uh, I have never seen an act of aggression from a dog to another dog or to a person. Nor have I seen anybody knocked down. Uh, now that's over a long period of time. Um, and my sense is, and, and I am not diminishing in any way, shape, or form individual situations. I am the first one to tell you that I believe that a, a human is absolutely responsible for the behavior of their dog. When you see dogs on leash, how many dogs do you see that are straining? There's a, in dog training, there's a, a, a term. It's called loose lead. What it means is that although you have your dog on a leash, the leash is loose, which means that the dog is trained. 
that knows what it's responsible to do, okay? When you see a dog on a leash that's straining all the time, that means that the dog is not trained, the dog wants to get away, and the leashes and the dog parks, it, we're finding out, the dogs, when they're confined in a certain way, can become fearful. Dogs don't have a mean bone in their body, but if they're fearful, then yeah, you might get some behavior that's unacceptable and you have to correct that. And the human needs to correct that right off the bat. So the whole concept of, well, everybody's gotta be on a leash, isn't necessarily a cure-all to this particular issue. Uh, you, you all have my letter, and I just wanted to reinforce that there are mechanisms, enforcement mechanisms in place now. If there was a vicious dog on the loose, or a number of dogs have created multiple incidents, the Humane Society would have been down here already. The Humane Society is, I'll say, assertive. I won't say aggressive. I'll say assertive about enforcing those types of things, and they should be. So the Humane Society would have become involved in these things right away if the proper reporting was done. And in my letter, I basically um, want to make sure that people understand that there is a mechanism right now to deal with that. And I've never seen a dog owner that was so recalcitrant that once they were talked to, that you know you have to do something about your dog, it's unacceptable to everybody else around you, everybody complies because most people, or just about everybody, wants to be a good neighbor. So my, my point, my strong point, is that there is a mechanism in place now. We don't need more restrictions. We don't need another law. Uh, we need re responsible dog owners, and any dog owner that allows their dog to do something like that, uh, the people that are involved need to report it to the Humane Society. The Humane Society can, can figure out who this person is, they come out. Of course, we all know each other. Everybody, of course, I know all the dogs' names. I'm not sure I know all the people's <laughs> names. But, um, you know, the word gets around. Linda did the same thing in her incident, unfortunate incident, and she asked around. And that's how she figured out who it was. They went, they had a talk, and they worked things out. Okay? That's my point on, on this whole thing, is instead of more laws, more regulations, more restrictions, there's already a mechanism in place. I don't think any change is needed. The board uh, that created this particular thing came to a good compromise. Um, they were trying to meet all needs. It's well written. Uh, there's enforcement action in that, in that particular thing, um, in, in, in particular ordinance. And my feeling is that we're fine. We just need to go out and use the existing enforcement mechanism if there is somebody, uh, a person, that is not controlling their dog, that their dog is out of control. Uh, I have not seen that ever in 40 years of walking the loop, walking in the, in the glen. Not ever. And so my sense is unfortunate individual incidents. I'm not diminishing in any way, shape, or form how people feel about, you know, a dog running and, and, and but I've never seen a dog running at me. Um, with teeth bare, uh, I just I, I've just never seen it. So um, those are my points. Uh, I would suggest that we're okay. I think we need to uh, implement existing uh, law if an incident occurs. Okay, thank you. That's it. No Linda, did you have no comments? Yeah. First, I'm going to show you my dog. <laughs> okay, this is my dog that's been attacked three times since I adopted her less than three years ago. She's a rescue dog. She was four when I adopted her. She's seven now. And within three weeks of adopting her, uh, well, she's a basset hound, obviously. Basset hounds have to be on leash. It's not because she's aggressive. Everybody should know that basset hounds are the most docile. I go to the... Um, the 4th of July picnic and parade in Nevada, 100 basset hounds, not one fight. 100 basset hounds racing around all over the place, not one fight. So my dog is on leash because of her nose. Basset hounds are scent hounds. And if you let a scent hound off leash, 
they're going to run, and they're going to run for miles chasing <coughs> um, a scent, and they're going to get lost. So my dog is not aggressive, and I really hope that people will understand that some dogs on leash are on leash because the owner doesn't want to lose them. Like whippets as well. Whippets will race and chase something. Um, Linda, but, but, point of order. I, oh, yes, sorry. If you can adjust the board, that, that would oh, be a sorry. Good. Okay, well, I just wanted to show my t-shirt. No problem. Um, <laughs> and tell everyone who I was talking about. Okay, so, I'll, I, and I can make this quick because you guys basically know the deal. Um, First of all, I did want to say that in the ordinance, it is very, very ambiguous. The ordinance says that a park is open space. The ordinance says a park is a park. A park is a recreation center. A park is an area devoted to active or passive recreation. So the panhandle is defined as a park. Um, I, in looking at the ordinance, I did want to just clarify that one little teeny place because some people um, think that the panhandle is not part of a park, but it is because of the way it's maintained and, and the way hundreds of people walk through it, etc. However, my, uh, my biggest reason, as I said, is because three times in less than three years, my Basset Hound has been attacked unprovoked. We have always been on leash. What we always do whenever we see a dog coming at us or walking or off leash or on leash, whatever, we always stop and we wait to see what's gonna happen. We wait to talk to the owner. Is it okay? Is it not okay? Should we just keep going? Off leash dogs are a little more difficult to figure out because sometimes their owners are way far away. The first time we were attacked, uh, the Emmy was attacked, the owner was way down the end of the panhandle. He chucked a ball. He, I couldn't even see the guy. I saw the dog racing 100, at least 125 feet. The dog stopped 25 feet away from us, saw, uh, saw my dog, and immediately charged and jumped on top of her, held her to the ground, rolled her in the dirt, and I screamed, my dog screamed. The owner wasn't still in sight. The dog ran away and my Emmy only got one scrape in her skin. So we were lucky. The second time it happened when three women and their two dogs off leash, who said they were friendly and fine, uh, and I and my Emmy on leash were talking to each other. We were just standing still talking to each other without any, provo provo uh, any kind of situation happening. Her dog, Sheba, jumped on my Emmy and attacked her. The third time was just last September when we were walking through the panhandle in a very narrow area of the panhandle, which is about six, we were in the six foot wide area. And I had two dogs walking with me at the time. And from behind, David and his dog, David was on a bicycle and his dog was racing in front of him. His dog came up to Emmy. I didn't even know that they were behind us. He jumped on her, raked her ear, causing a lot of medical injuries, and David did take care of the medical bills, which I was very pleased with. But what I also have found out is in January, just last month, his dog also did the same thing to another dog on Quietwood who had a, uh, uh, was bitten in the neck. So what I'm, Trying to figure out is how can we possibly have off-leash dogs and on-leash dogs live together? And I really don't think it's possible. When all dogs are off-leash, everybody seems to be happy and running and playing and, and going crazy. But when you have dogs on-leash in the same area that dogs are off-leash, there's more of a situation. And the only way that I can see the situation being fixed in the panhandle and I have read and talked to many people, I mean dozens of people who have had bad experiences with their dogs being attacked, with them being attacked, with them being knocked over, with their children being fearful, and, and Leah, hopefully Leah will attest to the fact that um, back in 2011, there was a child, uh, Bruce Anderson said there was a child bitten by a dog, and that's why the leash laws were uh, put in the way they were. So. For me, it's a matter of safety for my dog. It's a matter of safety for me. I don't want to be knocked over, but I, 
I'm a tall, large person. I'm strong, and I don't know how, you know, if I could be knocked over, a 100-pound lady could be knocked over much better than me. But I think it's safety for the children. There's hundreds of kids walking through the panhandle every day. There's a, a picnic area, you know, where the firemen's picnic area is with tables and chair benches and everything. It is a park. And for the safety of leashed dogs, for the safety of children, and for the safety of senior citizens, I think dogs should be on leash because the unleashed dogs, a lot of them are not in control. And thank you all for your comments. Yes, I, I, sir. I'm Debbie Hunter from the Sheriff's Department. It's, I'm sitting in this meeting and I just got one quick comment just maybe for you guys to be aware of. I dealt with the dog problem uh, with San Quentin Village Homeowners Association, Association and the bridge, the beach issue. You, know, you guys are talking about the footpath and you have an existing ordinance, what you're talking about coming up is that the McGinnis Park should be shut down. But what happened to San Quentin Village is that, that somehow Dog Blog or whatever, dogblogwalker.com got a hold of spots in Wren where people could just come and bring their dogs and run amok. When McGinnis Park shuts down, the closest place you're gonna come is here. So if you eliminate that ordinance and this <coughs> place becomes a hotbed, you're gonna have, you have a tight, community that everybody knows of these dogs, but when you have people coming in from other areas with their dogs six, seven abreast running up and down, you're going to see a little bump in elevation of problems. So whatever you come up with as a plan with your ordinance, leave something in place just in case you have a whole onslaught of, of people saying, hey, this is the new hot bed. And with kids coming out of school and all that, it, it's a dynamic issue. You get dogs on leash, off leash. 99% of the time, there's never a problem. It's only when you get one problem that becomes a real issue. But if, if you, and it's not because I'm pro law enforcement, whatever is going to keep status quo good, and you guys self solve your internal problems, but don't leave an open door for outside issues to come in when some place else shuts down. Okay, let's go to Rainbow Park, let's run amok because there is no ordinance. And then you guys are screaming, hey, some dog, I don't know his name, this guy's not even our neighborhood, they, then they call us. You know, he shouldn't, not that he shouldn't be here, but they have six dogs that attack my dog because they're not as responsible as you guys are. So. You kind of want to consider something like that in that effect. Great. Thank you. Let's be aware of that. So, I'll, um, if you can make your, your comment very quickly, uh, go ahead, because then. Um, I'm somebody that, um, and I don't want to state my name, um, I'm somebody that actually does walk dogs on leash. I've never had any problems with dogs being off leash or on. And there's some very simple solutions to this. Um, and if you understand dogs and understand how um, dogs are, mm -hmm. because most dogs are not attack dogs, and I'm excluding those from this uh, statement, um, it's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, again, thank you all very much for for your comments and also for taking the time to, to come and be a part of uh, our meeting in person. So what, we'll, what we will do now and what needs to happen is in order for us as a board to discuss the pros and cons of, of this issue, <clears throat> We'll, <clears throat> we'll need a, a motion from a board member, and we'll need a second. So at, at this time, uh, I'll, I'll look for a motion. Uh, I would like to add that in order for us to, if, if, we, if, if we as a district, as a board, want to move forward with this, along with the language that, that is proposed to be included in Ordinance 2011-03, along with that, in conversations with the Marine Humane Society in terms of how to, to ensure that this is actually enforceable and effective. We would also need to include the bail schedule, or we would also need to include all applicable animal control portions of the bail schedule. And we would also need to authorize <coughs> uh, our district manager to draft and submit a letter to MHS, Marine Humane Society, giving authorization to them to patrol and issue citations on our district property. And 
So saying saying those things, is, is there? I, I did have a question before we did make a motion. I know we're, we're currently talking primarily about the park panhandle. Are there issues with enforcement in the parks themselves, in terms of ordinances that, ordinances that we have? Well, I think it's very clear in the ordinance as it's written. What are you know kind of defining the actual parks? Like if you say the grassy area, you know, with the playground right out here, or the mini park, or Creekside Park. Mm -hmm. are the three parks per se that we have it's clear what's allowed in open space on there this is the one area that does have a level of uh, gray to it it's not quite as black and white if you add this in there you're definitely going to uh, the, allow the humane society if they see a dog running off leash in the grassy area right out here to issue citations according to the municipal ordinance bail schedule for the county because what we're doing <coughs> is adding <coughs> multi-use trails, that portion into what is already clearly defined in our park section of this ordinance, correct? Correct. Thank you. All right. So I'm sorry, could you repeat the things that you said you need to do besides draft letters to the Main Society? You have to do something about bonds? No, there was nothing about bonds. So in, in what needs to be included in this motion is, is we need to, we as a district need to adopt the proposed change, language change in the ordinance, that's one. Two, we need to include all applicable animal control bail schedule. Did you say bail schedule? Bail schedule, not, not bond. So the bail schedule is, <clears throat> Fees. It's term it's terminology, bail schedule. It is basically the citation fees, base fines, plus penalty assessments and surcharges. So when there's a fee associated that you're in, for instance, uh, an unlicensed dog is a seventy-six dollar fee issued by the Marine Humane Society. That would need to be included in the ordinance as well, most likely as attachment A. So it's it's just there needs to be a um, in order for this to be enforceable, there needs to be a fine or a penalty associated with it. It is in the ordinance already, five hundred dollars. No, it's five hundred dollars. It's in the ordinance. How much for alcohol? And that's for the no. It's for everybody. Everybody that violates a rule. Five hundred dollars for everybody that violates a rule. You can clean up on Friday nights. So for for various reasons, my understanding is that it's not enforceable, and the reason why that mo that might be is because fifty. It's section seventeen, so it's five hundred in section eighteen. Says here shall be punished by a fine not exceeding five hundred dollars. Government code section six one zero six four. The bail schedule comes from the Marin County Municipal Ordinances, and this is what the Humane Society follows. And my understanding is that that's what's needed for it. It needs to be essentially universal throughout the county, whether through the county or municipalities or districts, in order for the, the agency to enforce it. So, and then the, the last portion needed in the motion was for the board to authorize the district manager to draft and submit a letter to Marine Humane Society giving authorization to them to patrol and issue citations on district property. But the ordinance already gives authorization to the board members and the staff to do that. Well, again, we as a district are not. The district does not have an arm to issue citations. Exactly. And so the, 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 the really the, the only means of enforcement that the district has is to, is, is to conform to what we're in humane society. Well, you better fix the ordinance for that then, too. Because it's in the ordinance, it says staff and board can issue citations. So, again, this is. Can I make a motion? I have just done it. Yeah, okay, exactly. It's going. Yes, go okay. ahead. I, um, pardon me. Um, I move to approve ordinance 2011-13 revision to ordinance to revision to ordinance to require leash restrictions on multi-use trails, including Marinewood Park and Handle Trail. Um, and adopting the bail code as presented and also authorizing the district manager to 
uh, contact the Marine Humane Society to patrol and issue citations if necessary. Um, I do believe you said 2011-13. Oh, 20, sorry. So it's 2011-03. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Uh, motion made by Director Timon Green and seconded by Director Perry. So, so at this time, now having a motion to second, it allows the board to openly discuss the, the pros and cons about what we're, what we're looking at doing uh, as stated in the motion. So at, at this time, I'll just open it up for the board. If there's, we can kind of just go down the line. Sure. Director Shea. Um, I didn't get involved with making the motion or seconding because after listening to everybody speaking, <clears throat> I'm having a real hard problem as having more governmental interference into <coughs> people's lives. It's as simple as that. I think most dog owners are responsible for their dogs. There's very little that we don't take for granted as far as personal responsibility. And after hearing everybody here, I just I'm having a hard time wanting more intrusion by the government. So I. When we come up for a vote, I'm going to have to vote now. Um, well, I sat through many, many, many months of meetings, um, community meetings, and... Uh, I'm sorry, could you speak up? I can't hear you. Sorry, I have a really bad cold right now. I sat through many months of um, board meetings and commission meetings when this first came up, many, the last time it came up in 2011. and. While I applaud everyone who's here today, and it seems like this is the you know a one community of responsible dog owners, that this is not representative of everybody in our community, and that is where I'm coming from. That one instance, or two instances, but it's too many in terms of the liability liability to the district, in terms of the liability liability to our community, and just I, I lived on Pinewood for eight years, and walking my kids anywhere through that panhandle or to the park. I was terrified, I'm still terrified of that area that it has leash laws. People don't keep their dogs on leashes. And I have experienced, and I know so many people have experienced asking people to put their dogs on leash, and they say, no, you can't make me. I mean, there's, there are responsible people and there are irresponsible people, and it's, I don't see it as a punishment to the responsible people. I just see it as kind of just best practices for everybody. And I agree with what Phil said about not wanting more government intrusion. And we all know realistically in terms of enforcement that that's going to be difficult you know and to do and I don't think that that's the purpose or the rationale here the rationale is to you know discourage the bad people and to get them out and especially learning tonight about McGinnis Dog Park or McGinnis Park closing um, that's also terrifying to me but if there is going to be I mean with the internet people have blogs and lists and if that all of a sudden creates a new draw to Marinewood because I will look at this area, what has been, you know, enjoyed by many a detriment to some, we're exposing ourselves to potentially far more liabilities than any of us can imagine. And that I just don't think it's, um, I don't think it's responsible as a board um, to, I, I mean, kind of exactly what the sheriff said, I thought he had a really good point, so. Thank you. Jeff? Yes. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to echo um, Justin's comments about thanking everyone for attending and for your emails. I hope you come back to our next meeting as well. <laughs> Second thing, um, I get very sensitive when people talk about 60 years. I don't know why, but I do. Um, the Marine Community Services District will be 56 years old in two weeks, so we're still young. Anyway. Um, more to the point, we do have an ordinance in place that governs the actions of dog owners on and off leash already in the area known as the Panhandle. It's enforceable to a degree, but I can also say that the level of enforcement that we have in place for a, um, an on-leash area of our park is way underutilized. Enforcement will be an issue. Um, second thing, 
I agree with all of the comments that have been made about taking, you know, essentially making the attempt to take away um, the ability of people to walk their dogs off leash for um, rather exceptional events. I have absolute sympathy for those who have had the problem, but I find them to be in such minority that to pass this law would be um, unfair. I believe that we have a good compromise between the areas in our park that are heavily utilized and do have leash laws and this one area that does not and allows um, owners to walk their dogs off leash. I would um, strongly suggest that we keep it as is and come under the county ordinance that does control um, quote unquote open space. Um, whether this is uh, considered a multi-use trail or open space, I think is beside the point. It is a um, isolated and um, relatively small area in our park. I think we should keep it um, just the way it is. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Isabella? Um, thank you for coming and submitting all your letters. Um, um, I'm a mother of two, but I'm also a dog owner of one adorable wire dog. <laughs> so I've been reading um, the emails that were forwarded to us uh, carefully um, and just wanted to kind of summarize the, the ideas that we're sending out based on the 30-odd you know, emails that we read. Um, people who you know, do, are not in favor, they say, oh, it's been like this for years, why ruin it? Uh, my dog behaves well. Um, I've never witnessed any problems. Um, I uh, see and understand the issue of inconvenience, um, um, not being able to walk somewhere to a dog park um, is, is indeed inconvenient. Um, and um, you know, another issue that has been repeated many times is it's a rare incident. Um, you know, why punish responsible dog? Um, what I really liked was um, somebody said it's it's not a dog problem, it's people problem. Mm -hmm. And I fully understand that and I agree with that. Um, the problem is we, we have no way of ensuring that um, people follow up with their training. And um, my dog is very friendly. <laughs> Everybody says that. Um, I did not leash train her. She pulls on leash like crazy, but that's a dachshund for you. Um, anyhow, uh, the, the pros that I heard, um, again, there were many people who said, you know, I kind of don't like the fact that pets eliminate into the creek or people who don't leash their dogs don't clean up um, because they don't really know where the dog is. Um, another issue was um, the Dogs intimidate people and other dogs. Um, and finally, uh, you know, people have been attacked, the dogs have been attacked, uh, resulting in medical treatment. And um, I can see how that's something that seems like a um, one off incident, but it gets relevant when it happens to you. Um, so, I, um, I fully understand that CSD will not be able to enforce this and it will be difficult for anybody to uh, go and um, seek enforcement. Uh, but I do agree with uh, Leah that our primary business is to protect residents the best way we can. And um, if there are people who walk that way and feel intimidated or threatened, then it's, it's not okay for me. Um, and also, I'm interested in mitigating any uh, liability to the district. And for that reason, I would be uh, voting in favor of um, changing the, uh, the ordinance. Thank you, Isabella. I really didn't expect that it was going to be split like this necessarily before it, it came to me. And um, my, my thoughts on the issue are, I think all of you and all on both sides of the issues, people have brought up very 
relevant and very concerning issues. And, and those of you who, who have spoken tonight, I, I like, like the rest of the directors, understand and, and sympathize with the points that you brought up and, and, and things that you have said. My primary concerns around changing the designation of this primarily have to do with its location within our community. It is, it is a, a general, and in my, in my experience of it, it, it is a, a, a general thoroughfare in the heart of our community that is used not just by pet owners, but by cyclists, by walkers of all ages, and, and also, as has been brought up, uh, children of all ages as well. I, I feel areas that allow off-leash use generally tend to be work, work best when they're in an area that does not have so much cross-use amongst all, all different walks of people. And going back to the way that we maintain this area, the fact that it does join two primary park areas for our community also lends to, to that use by all people of, of, of all walks. Regarding the issue of where can off-leash dog owners go, within our community, as, as has been brought up, there are numerous open space areas really on the periphery and on the edges and, and in distance to the park panhandle, there's portions that are really just a stone's throw away. The Queenstone Fire Road I know is one. Another one is uh, a trail that runs parallel uh, behind Appleberry, which is much, much more flat versus the Queenstone Fire Road. And I know that there's even more um, beyond that. The, the biggest issue for me, as Leah and both Isabella have brought up, is the issue of district liability. If, if this has been rather heavily publicized in terms of the amount of consideration that we're taking into this, and knowing that we live in what has become an increasingly more and more litigious society, where anyone can sue anyone over anything. My concern as a district director comes back to if a catastrophic incident were to occur in that area at, at any time in the future, what liability does that open up to, to the district? And, and I think with, with a situation that no one ever wants to have happen, we need to err on, on the side of caution regarding that. So in, in, in that, because of that reasoning, uh, I do feel that I have to vote in favor of, of the motion. So unless there are any further comments from the board, uh, I'll call the, the motion to question. All those in, in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, those in favor, Director Kai, Perry, and Clement Green, and of course, meeting Kai, tomorrow night. Director Taylor and Shay. Thank you. And again, thank you all for attending and for all your letters. And um, we appreciate your attendance. It's a shame that people Moving on to item G, consent calendar. So just so we're clear, we're done, I guess, huh? That's it? We, have to do. Yeah, we can elect new we can elect new directors. What's that? We can elect new directors. Okay. Okay. On, it just seems overwhelming to me. Calendar and, uh, you know, the email's 1813 and, and all the people here and now we move to three two. This is absurd. I'm really disappointed. That's, that's sad. You're ruining it for all of us out here, the dog owners. Is there a second for approving uh, consent calendar? Oh, okay. You know, All right.